Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Liam's Daily Book Reviews here at Northern's Haunted Book Factory. Today we're going to be talking about a book by Dean Koontz called Watchers. Uh, I planned to do it over the weekend, but I ran out of time, so we're going to be doing it today. Watchers is a 1987 novel by Dean Koontz, it's a science fiction horror novel. It is in top three of my favourite Dean Koontz books. Um, so let's dive right into it. It follows the story of a man named Travis Cornell. Now, at the start of the book, we follow Travis as he goes for a hike through the Santa Ana foothills in California. Now, we don't really know much about him at this point. He's just a fit man in his late 20s, um, climbing up these, these big foothills, and he's going to make a day of it. Now, as he comes to this clearing, all of a sudden, a golden retriever runs out from the bushes and runs up to him. Now, this dog is got very matted fur and has a bit of blood on it and looks like it's been out in the bush for a very long time, but he's not scared. The dog seems friendly. But, so, you know, Travis pats the dog and as he goes to walk past it, in like keep going along the trail, the dog starts to growl at him. And he thinks, you know, what's up with this dog? And then, so he keeps going, the dog sort of snaps at his foot. So he has to go back. Now this dog keeps, keeps doing that. And, uh, so he doesn't know what's wrong with the dog, so he keeps trying to get around it, get around it, until he realises something. He, um, his intuition tells him the dog doesn't want him to go that way down the path. There's something down there. There's something, something threatening down there that's a hazard to Travis's health. And then all of a sudden he can hear it. Something is coming. Something is coming very fast. It's running at him through the bush. And the dog is behind him now, like kind of looking at him going like, and whining, saying, come on, follow me, follow me. So they start to run, the dog and the man, and they get out of there. And the the intro, for right at the start of this book, it's this, it's a chase, and you don't know what's chasing them. But the way Dean Koontz describes it, it's very suspenseful, and you're really curious as to what this thing is. And it gets so close to them that Travis ends up pulling his gun out of his backpack that he's taken with him, firing a warning shot into the air, and this thing runs off. But it doesn't run very far. It runs around and tries to get behind them. So eventually he escapes with this dog. They get into his truck and they take off. Now, something about this dog is quite strange. It seems to understand everything that he says to it. You know, he thinks, well, am I going bonkers or is this dog just exceptionally smart? So he does a few little tests and realizes, wow, this dog is really switched on and seems to understand actually not just what I mean, but understand human words. So, we leave Travis there with his new dog. And now we meet another character. Now, this character is named Vincent Nasco, and he's a hitman. Now, we meet Vincent as he's killing a doctor in a doctor's big rich house. Now, all right, so, spoilers, okay? This book is 32 years old, so as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's not like another remake of the movies coming out. I mean, there is a movie, but that came out in 1988. So, you know, spoilers. There is going to be spoilers. I'm going to talk about this book, so I apologize. Um, so, yeah, so this Vincent Nasco is a hitman. And now I have to say this. Dean Koontz, the writer of this book, has said countless times that he loves all sorts of different authors, but his number one all-time favourite author is John D. MacDonald. Now, my number one all-time favourite author is John D. MacDonald. Now, the bad guys in John D. MacDonald novels are just, just really, really bad apples. You know, the kind of bad guys you find in a John D. novel is just like, they're just despicable, they're horrible, they need to be stopped. And you can tell where Dean Koontz gets his inspiration for his bad guys. He, they're straight out of a John D. McDonald, just not as good. So this Vincent guy, he's straight out of a John D. McDonald novel, and he's working for a shady agency that hires him to kill people. Now, that's just like the book that I reviewed before, The Good Guy. You know, he rings up, he gets information about who he's got to kill, they tell him where and when. And this guy even wants approval, you know, because he's the best hitman that there ever is. Same as the good guy. So, you know, once again, it's that formula. But, you know, you could argue that Watchers did it first. But he's definitely done it. Dean Koontz has definitely done characters like this a lot. But the, the difference between Vincent Nasco is when he kills people, he thanks them 
like, you know, he strokes their cheeks and he's like, thank you. Thank you so much for your sacrifice. And he really believes it. He really thinks that these people sacrifice themselves to him when, you know, they really didn't want to die, but it's not the way he looks at it. So he's killing people. Now, what we find out is this thing that is was chasing Travis and the dog through the bush, this thing escaped from a secret government laboratory, but so did the dog. And they are telepathically linked. So the dog is a genetically modified um, golden retriever. And this monster, well, it's a genetically modified something. Now, the dog is like a homing device. This, this, um, this government lab burnt down. And the only two things to escape was the dog and this big animal. Now, the animal is called the outsider. And it's cool. It's very fast. It's very big. It's hairy. It's got big, scary teeth. It's not human and it's not a bear. It's something. It's the outsider. And wherever the dog goes, no matter what, this telepathic link just constantly keeps the outsider following the dog around. So anyone near the dog is in grave danger. So now we meet our third character. It is Nora Devon. And she is a woman who lives alone, who was raised by her rich aunt. And... It's not her fault that Dean Koontz wrote her so one-dimensional. You know, she's she's just the natural victim. I mean, you find out why. You know, her aunt's pretty much terrorized her her whole life, and she never really she lives such a sheltered existence that you know men scare her, and this happens, and she's never come out of her shell. But it's like it doesn't really do a female character justice. You know, it's like I don't think it's very cool portraying women that way. You know, so, um, yeah, Dean Koontz really didn't write a very good character in Nora. So, some guy's terrorizing Nora. She's just, you don't know what she's got to do with the story yet. But, Travis and his new dog are go, playing in the park. Travis has taken the dog for a run in the park. And this guy is terrorizing Nora. And Travis and the dog go over there and save the day. And now we begin a romance. So, there's a love story to, that happens between Travis and Nora. And, you know, they, they have their new dog. It's a happy little family. Um, so, you know, the love story is fun enough, I guess. And because the dog's so smart, they named the dog Einstein. So it's Nora, Travis, and Einstein. But the, the outsider is still coming for them. The outsider is still chasing them. And this Vincent Nasco, he's actually been hired by this agency to kill all the doctors that knew about these creatures escaping and the lab burning down so that no one finds out about it, something like that. So they've also got Vincent Nasco trying to track the dog down and anybody that knows any information about it. So he's after Travis, the outsider's after Travis, this agency's after Travis. So when they find that out, they, they have a really close brush with this Vincent Nasco. He tries to kill them. They go into hiding. And it's quite a big book. And uh, they eventually get a whole bunch of Scrabble letters together and build this little sort of machine so that Einstein can actually properly communicate with them using his paw and writing words and sentences to let them know what's going on. And they live happily ever after for a little while until the outsider comes for them. And they've set up this huge big place out in the bush and there's like booby traps everywhere and they arm to the teeth and Travis teaches uh, Nora how to use guns and weapons and, uh, you know, and it's, I think I'm pretty sure, um, you know, because it's been a couple of years since I read it, I'm pretty sure that Einstein's, you know, he's a few years older now, he's getting a bit older, and uh, but the outsider just never gave up. He's been tracking them, tracking them this whole time. So, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, except there is, yeah, like I said, there is a movie. It came out one year after the book did. It stars Corey Haim. Corey Haim, rest in peace. He was so awesome in all those 80s and 90s movies. And he's really good in this, and it also stars Michael Ironside as the bad guy that's chasing them around. So, great cast, definitely worth a watch. I love the movie Watchers. But the only difference is um, the Travis character is just a teenage kid that lives with his mum instead of an ex-military guy. Well, sorry, I didn't actually say that. We find out Travis Cornell, our main guy in the book, is ex-military. That's why he knows about guns. That's why he's, you know, we can trust him to, to protect Nora and protect Einstein. So that's it. Um, definitely read Watchers. Top three Dean Koontz books. Fantastic. When they brought the movie out, they brought out also Watchers 2 and Watchers 3. I've seen all three of them. When I was a kid, I liked them all. Now I pretty much only like the first one. 
Um, but definitely worth a watch and definitely, definitely worth a read. I give watches a four out four four stars out of five for a Dean Koontz novel for sure. Um, give it a read. Uh, tomorrow I will be reviewing a Ramsey Campbell novel, another really favourite of mine called Ancient Images. And it's a really great book, so tune in for that. Take care of one another. Read some good books. If you want me to review something, leave it in the comments section below. And um, yeah, take care of one another. Goodbye.